Hello, this is Ron Press. I'm going to talk to you about how you can catch small delay defects and just the basics of how timing where ATPG works. So to start, we've seen you know really good unique defect detection with defect oriented test, which is sometimes referred to as automotive grade ATPG as well. So these are pattern types that look at the physical design and it's really figuring out where there's opportunities for a particle to cause a defect and then we can target it with special patterns. So we've seen really good industry results. There's been publications from, from many companies. Uh, a lot of this is cellware test and relatively recently uh, Intel and ON as we reference here had, had nice results they showed with unique detection with defect oriented test. We can also use kind of an apples to apples measure between different fault models and defect oriented test to see which ones will have a bigger impact from a particle. So that way we can use critical area to optimize these patterns and sort them on an apples to apples basis. So these are really valuable. People are adopting more of these types of patterns, but what happens with a marginality that's a little different than looking at a particle defect. Timing aware ATPG targets marginalities, and that's a, a good way to catch small delay defects. It actually, timing aware can be combined with cellware test, where cellware is giving some filters, so it can also run a test on the, on the biggest timing delay within the cell to give you a combination of timing aware cellware for a great pattern set. So let me introduce to you a little bit more about timing aware and I'll come back to cell aware timing aware combination. So timing aware is similar to transition fault. Both faults uh, have a fault site at each gate pin, slow to rise, slow to fall. The big difference is for transition fault, it's considering a gross delay on the pin. So any path that you test through that pin is a valid path to catch a gross delay. Timing aware is looking for a small delay. So we're going to find the longest path around that pin that we can use for the excitation and propagation to capture point. So in a way, timing aware is similar to path delay, but where we're making these patterns to catch that fault on the longest path on the fly. ATBG does this. You don't have to know the paths ahead of time. ATBG figures it out as it's running. So let's look at just a simple example where there's a few paths and I'm targeting a fault, a slow to rise at the output of that AND gate. So for transition fault, since any path is okay, we're catching a gross delay, then the tool is smart and it'll find an easy path to propagate. In this case, we see it's this path P4. Now note when we're creating almost all types of patterns, in this case, transition pattern, beyond what we target, all sorts of other activity is happening in the circuit and we're capturing at all the scan cells. So we're going to have fortuitous detection, which means we're gonna find transitions that are captured all through the circuit, that's fortuitous detection. And we're gonna take full credit for that detection with transition pattern and take it off the fault list. Now with small delay defects and transition pattern and timing or pattern, what I'm doing is I have all the delay information of the circuit. What I'm going to do is calculate the sum of delays um, going back my excita excitation path and forward to my um, capture point. And I will have ATBG prioritize on the longest path and try to find the solution to get to the longest path for excitation and propagation. And in this case, if I had a one and a half nanosecond um, small delay at that fault site, I would be able to catch it. Timing error would propagate down the longest path as we show here. Now, one other thing that timing aware does for all the fortuitous detection around the circuit I don't take full credit if I did capture a fault at another location and I wasn't targeting it. What I'll do is I'll take credit that's a percent of 
the path I used compared to the longest path. So that way I'm I'm kind of giving it an extra metric in the grading. I just don't have a, either a full capture or zero capture. I have a partial capture because it's a percent of the longest path. So how does timing or ATPG work? So first we read in the SDF, the delay information for the circuit. You define what's the clock periods, then a command to turn on timing or ATPG, inject faults, which just means you're gonna add all the faults, or you can say, I want to just target the most critical faults, which, which most people do. Then you run your ATPG, and you can report to see what's the delay distribution of your circuit. So for ATPG, you don't want to target every fault in the design for two reasons. One, it's too many faults to target, so the ATPG runtime and the pattern size would be too big. And the second reason is if there's a fault site with only a big slack around it, it's a, it's a short path, then it's really not that critical and a small delay isn't gonna cause a defect. So what we can do is just target the most timing critical paths. We can give it a percent of the clock period or we can say a specific slack margin. And that way we'll go after the faults in our target list that are the most important ones. So suggestions for running timing aware ATBG to catch these small delay defects one is you can look at the circuit with uh, various reporting commands. And one thing that's nice, after you read in the STF, so you know the timing information, you can ask the tool, tell me the distribution of slacks in my circuit. And some designs you will find that the slacks are pretty well balanced so that running a transition pattern is gonna be almost as likely as finding small delays as timing aware. For other circuits, you'll find out there's a big distribution of delays with the slack. And in that case, it's a good candidate for timing or ATPG. The other thing with this set ATPG timing command, that's how you turn on timing or ATPG. You want to set uh, the slack margin for timing critical faults. So this is saying I want a unit of three, same unit as I defined for the clocks. That's the slack margin I want to go after. Or I can give it a percent of the clock period. And then I also want to say when it's okay to drop the fault from the target list if I have fortuitous detection. And that's the slack margin for fault dropping. And you usually want to make this fairly aggressive if you really want to test all of these faults in your fault list close to the longest path. And one note is the metric we have with timing aware, you still have, you can get your regular transition coverage, but the timing aware metric gives you a percent of the longest path for each fault where we have detection. So that way, instead of having, you know, a one or a zero for detection or not, that we do with regular pattern generation for timing aware, we're gonna give you a percent that relates to how close you are to the longest path for every fault that's detected. So the really nice industrial results that were published by Will Howell at ITC 2018, combining timing or ATPG and cellaware ATPG, where cellaware can focus on the, the biggest delays through the, through the cell itself. So this is just a quick summary of how you combine timing or ATPG and cellaware ATPG. You just read in your cellular ATPG UDFM file. And what you're also going to do is add a filter to filter out the, the faults that, that don't have a big impact on timing. So what this command will do, it'll, it'll keep the faults we target within the UDFM file to be the most timing critical faults. Then you use your regular timing or ATPG commands, read in the delay information, the SDF, turn on timing aware, define your clocks, and then you can create your patterns. I, I would add a uh, fault dropping threshold and the, uh, the, the slack margin you're targeting. Then you can create your patterns. And in this example, we show how you then can top off those patterns with regular 
cellular patterns for the rest of the uh, dynamic uh, cellular tests. Okay, thanks for your attention. This is all fully documented. I just wanted to give a, a quick summary of how uh, timing-aware ATPG works to catch small delay defects. Thank you.